Bruchem Aboyim, again, thank you very much for coming. This week's uh, lecture, again, it's a continuation of the lecture we gave last week on the month of El. As I began this lecture last week, I mentioned that we do this year after year, the month of El, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. But the question becomes, does anything really change? And where do these feelings of guilt and contrition that come from that we have every year? The answer, of course, seems to be obvious, what we call Jewish guilt. Our good side, the Eitz Tov, wants us to be good, and so it makes us feel bad when we go against God's will. <laughs> Not so sure. It may be well be that the one who is driving us toward tshuva, towards repentance, is really our evil inclination, the devil. The Eitz Zahara, as we call him. The book of Tanya, the Alter Rebbe's magnum opus, is based on a verse in the portion of Nitzavim 3014, which states, So, so. The thing is very close to you, in your mouth, and in your heart to do. Now, the side of evil is well aware that at our core we are all good people. We know, he knows, that during this time of the year, we are going to have feelings of regrets for the sins we have committed throughout the year. He also knows that if we do not talk about tshuva and think about tshuva, then we might actually have to do tshuva. And so he encourages us to think and talk about tshuva. He only gets involved when we actually try to turn our thoughts and conversation into action. You know, health clubs can have as many as 10,000 members, and yet they only have 300 lockers. How is that possible? Try to get a parking space at a health club on January 1st. The parking lot is full. Come one week later and you can park at the front door. Many people make New Year's resolutions to work out this year. They think about it, they talk about it, but how long do they keep it up? Serving God is very similar. You hear, you hear people say all the time, they're good Jews in their hearts. Sounds very romantic, but there's no substance to it. Imagine if you knew someone who had a wife and children, and he told you that he never sees his family, nor does he support them, but in his heart, he loves them. You would think he's an idiot. Serving God has to be connected to action. You can think about God all day, but until you actually do some action, your thoughts are useless. You need to connect. How evil is the Eight Sahara? Not only does he get us to sin, <laughs> and when he, we do, he doesn't even let us enjoy the sin. He makes us feel guilty that we sinned. In the evening prayer we say, Remove the Satan, Satan from before us and from behind us. What does that mean? One opinion is that we ask God to initially remove the influence of the Satan so that we can do a mitzvah. And then once we have done the mitzvah, to help us not to regret the fact that we have done the good deed. This challenge was given to Abba Avinu, Abraham our father, after the Akedah, after the binding of Yitzchak. His wife Sora thought that he had killed their son Yitzchak. But God had told Abravino not to kill Yitzchak. And when he came home to give her the good news, he found she had died, presumably because of her grief. He could have easily regretted the sin that he had done, pardon me, he could easily regretted the mitzvah that he had done. But instead, the word in the beginning of the portion of Chaisara for saying he cried, Livkoso, has a small cuff to indicate that he cried but not excessively, no regret. Or one may become overly proud and arrogant, much like the story of an old man in Siberia that got up early in the morning, and as Yetzirah says to him, what are you doing up? You're an 80-year-old man, what are you doing up so early? He says, you're older than I am, you're up. Why shouldn't I get up? He says, where are you going? He says, I'm going down to the river to put a hole in the ice and go to mikvah. He says, you're crazy. An old man like you, you'll kill yourself doesn't pay attention, trudges down to the river, goes to the mikvah. What does his Yetzirah say on the way back? Oh, what a tzaddik you are. You must be the greatest man that ever lived. You should be so proud of yourself. 
If he can't get you to sin, come and he'll get you on the way back. The lesson here is that you may think that your challenge is over. And the Yetzirah has conceded that you've beat him. Think again. He is always there and he is always coming. Stay awake at the wheel. There's another opinion that states that may Akarenu from behind you means that we ask God to not allow us to become despondent after we have sinned. As the Holy Baal Shem Tov teaches us, more than the side of evil wants you to sin, it wants you unhappy. Because if you're unhappy, sinning is an inevitability. We need to know that it was our action that was bad. We can change our actions even our mindset. But at our core, we are good and decent people with a godly soul who want to serve our Father in heaven. So how do we do tshuva that is real and substantive? First and foremost, we must have, take on a positive attitude. We must believe and we must and can't that we must believe and we, that we can change, that we can be better. We need to beat the edge of horror at his own game. He doesn't get us to rob a bank. He gets us to steal a penny and help us to, helps us to work our way up. And so too, we must take on our mission of tshuva bit by bit. We need to feel successful. Just like mitzvah goreret mitzvah, just like one good deed brings on another, so too, success brings on success. For the most part, we are all sprinters. We take on challenges of bettering ourselves, but only for short periods of time. And then we revert back to our old ways, much like a diet. You lose the weight, but then you put it back on. Dieting doesn't work. You have to change your eating habits, lifestyle. The Yetzirah is a marathon runner. He never gives up. And so too, we need to be marathon runners, never giving up even if we experience setbacks. We need to change something. We need to learn from the past. Though we may fail, we must do a little better each time. You know, these 40 days have been the days of repentance and reconciliation from the time that Moshe went up to Mount Sinai for the third time. He went up on Rosh Chodesh Elul and stayed there until the 10th of Tishrei, Yom Kippur, 40 days. And though the sin of the golden calf was grievous, God was able to forgive them. Rashi in the portion of Kisiso, 32-34 states that God says, I will forgive them for the sin of the golden calf, but every time that they sin, I must punish them and I'll add some additional punishment for their sin. You know, that to me doesn't sound like true forgiveness, especially coming from a loving father. So I prefer the opinion of Rabbi Yaakov David Amshenov, who says that when God said, the words that whenever they sin, I will remember the sin of the golden calf to mean that just like I was able to forgive them for the sin of the golden calf, a most grievous sin, so will I be able to forgive them for any sin that they commit in the future. So a major part of tshuva is the belief that God will forgive us. We just need to make a sincere effort and stay the course. As Rashi says in the portion of Bullock 22.35, in the way that a person wants to go. In that way, they direct him in heaven. The second blessings of the 13 personal requests that we make every day in the Amida is cause us to return our father to your Torah. We first turn to him in his capacity as our father. We ask him to guide us on a path that will help us to conduct, our, conduct ourselves in a way that he will be able to forgive us for our sins. First, we have to connect to his Torah, the instruction manual. In order to serve God and be successful in overcoming our evil inclination, we must have knowledge. A day should not go by without us learning some Torah. I always suggest to people they keep a Hebrew book on their nightstand and that they read at least three sentences, three verses every night. It may not seem like much, but it keeps you connected and moving in a positive direction. Secondly, the verse continues and says, 
and draw us near our King to your service. After we connect to God our Father by learning and internalizing his Torah, we then need to serve him as our King. We do this through prayer. Prayer is referred to in Ivrit as avoda talev, the service of the heart. He wants us not only to serve him, but even more so, to love him. As we say in the first paragraph of the Shema Yisrael, be ahavta et Hashem alokecha, and you should love the Lord your God. Once we have connected with God through Torah and prayer, both on the level of Father and King, we are now ready and able to and bring us back to you in wholehearted repentance. Not just superficially, but a complete and meaningful return to our relationship with our Father, our King. More than we want His forgiveness, He wants to forgive us. As the verse concludes, Blessed are you, God, who desires penitence. Just like any parent, God wants us to be successful and happy in life. He doesn't want to punish us. The third blessing of the 13 personal requests deals with the forgiveness of a father and a king. The word salach, salach lo avinu, forgive us, is used with a father and is mentioned three times in the verse. Machal lo malkenu, mechila, pardon, is used only once and with a king. A father forgives the sin. And it's gone and forgotten. A king pardons the sin. The sin is forgiven, but it's still remembered. The word salach has a gematria, a numerical value of 98, alluding to the forgiveness of the 98 admonitions that are mentioned in the portion of Kisavo. We blow the shofar on 28 of the 29 days of the month of El. 28 is the numerical value of the Hebrew word koach, meaning strength. The 28 days of the blowing of the shofar helps awaken within us the feeling that we need to actively become involved in preparing ourselves for what we call Yom Hadin, the Day of Judgment. We can only accomplish this by using the power of our Yad, hand, which is an American value of 14. Yad Yamin, the right hand, or Yad Smol, our left hand, alluding to the power of the Yad Sahara. Pardon me, the eight Satov, the right hand, and the power of the eight Sahara, the left hand, whom together give us the ability of Koach, 28, to Sur Meirav, Ase Tov, to turn away from evil and to do good. As I mentioned, we are preparing ourselves for the day of judgment. But who judges whom? We say that God sits in judgment of all of mankind on this day. But what is interesting is that we judge others, including God, daily. How we judge others has a great impact and how God will judge us. I think I'll stop here and next week we'll conclude again on how we can connect to God to ask, beg for his forgiveness and to reconnect to the relationship of a father and a son and bring joy to God and bring salvation to the world. God bless you. May you all have a good week. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for coming.